folks, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living, and we had a really fun weekend car shopping because I told you last week we had some problems with the Mini, and after getting worked up over another car repair, we decided that maybe it was just time to get a new car and then sell the Mini Cooper. So it turned out that the problem with the Mini was that it last time the mechanics worked on it and they did the whole engine clean out they didn't tighten all the bolts on the manifold so that actually fell off so they did a, a free complimentary repair for us which is very nice that we didn't have an additional problem with the car but in the meantime it got me thinking maybe i should probably be looking at some other cars especially for the coming year with four-wheel drive capacity something a little bit more rugged something that can climb the hills handle off-road and something with some more space compared to a Mini Cooper because I'm doing all these craft shows this summer. I need to have more cargo room. So let me kind of show you guys what we picked out. But in the meantime, right behind me, you can see we've picked up almost every last piece of trash and lumber. There used to be a big OSB pile over here. It's just down to a few bags. We moved our scaffolding out of the way. Um, the trash pile is completely gone. We've moved a lot more of our logs and everything over to the side where our spare lumber is. And where those were, it's just a nice empty cul-de-sac right now. Oop, did you see something? I did. All right, guys, what did I get for a car? Let's see if we can tell by the body. Okay, if that doesn't give it away, if you can't recognize it. Let's look at the, at the grill, because you'll know after this. I really like the style of this car. It is a Jeep Compass. So this is a compact SUV, but this is the Trailhawk model. And it's trail rated. It's got a lot of settings for off-road driving, including rock crawling, which I had talked to the truck, tow truck driver, when we got, here's like the tail end. When I talked to the tow truck driver, he was telling me that he just bought himself a, a Jeep Compass. So kind of made me feel a little bit better that a tow truck driver would buy a car like this. But he said he took it rock crawling and all his buddies were saying, there's no way you're gonna be able to crawl these rocks. And he said he was totally capable of the job and was really impressed with the car. So it has everything I wanted. It's got the clearance, the ground clearance. Um, I picked a white color. <laughs> you know, you think, oh, you live on a dirt road. Why would you pick white? But pretty much any color is going to get dirty. And I don't really want a black car. Plus, I love this contrast on the hood. This is a sort of like a, a matte finish that reduces glare when you're driving. And so that's really fun. Look at these cool red tow hooks here on the front of the car. So some nice, some nice little features. The inside of the car has a leather interior and then it's all trimmed out in red. So this is the trail hawk. All right. So in here at the dash, I'll show you what's, what's the fun, cool part is right here where you can set your settings for driving snow, sand, mud, rock. So that'll be fun to test out. I haven't really tried it out yet since we haven't had that many of those conditions just yet. But there's a nice computer interface. Um, plenty of controls on the steering wheel. And I like the, the, um, the style inside. The black the leather with the red trim is pretty cool. You can probably look up some reviews on YouTube. That's what I did. Um, it's not a powerhouse, I would say. Thanks. Seeing how it's a lease, I'm not going to try to make take any risks getting it scratched up or banged up or anything. But uh, I think it's definitely going to do the job for our driveway. And I just, I really like the color scheme. So it's not just that it's white, but the whole top of the, the roof is black. We've got a full body sunroof there. And um, it's, I think it just has a really cool style to it. All right. Here's the cool little emblem, the Trailhawk emblem on the back. Let's take a look inside. I'll show you what the cargo looks like. So 
Inside's all of my craft show stuff right now because I was all packed up from the weekend and I've got another show next weekend So I'm just leaving it all in here, but the item I want to show you is this Canopy tent and it's about five feet long and it fits directly behind my passenger seat because luckily I'm short enough where I have to sit close to the steering wheel and that creates those few extra inches where I can completely fit the full length of my canopy tent. You would think with the way though the wheels are that it's uh, not able to fit, but besides a little bit of dirt right here actually completely fits uh, when you close the door. It actually fits perfectly well. Uh, in the cargo area. So that was really something. Really excited to see that. And so I was definitely happy about that. Definitely happy about all this cargo room. And now I don't have to worry about everything bouncing around in the back of Brian's car when he's going to work. So I guess I would say the drawbacks of this car compared to driving the Mini Cooper is the power, the acceleration, the speed, um, the turns. It's not like the most fun car to drive up and down the mountain compared to the Mini Cooper. I don't think any car is really better than the Mini Cooper unless you're driving a Ferrari or a Porsche or something really awesome. Uh, but it, uh, it doesn't have a V6 engine, so it doesn't really have like a ton of power and I'm not going to be like towing lots of stuff with it. So that doesn't really matter to me, but it, d it is noticeable when you're going uphill and it's an automatic transmission which I haven't driven an automatic transmission in almost 20 years. It's been manual transmission for me all the way. It's hard to get used to that switch because you uh, a manual transmission is just way more efficient and you could you know like how much power you have in each gear. So with the the new automatic transmissions they go back and forth between the gears when you're going uphill and stuff and I just initially find that really annoying. So I don't know. The good thing is though that this is a lease, so after three years if I feel like it's still annoying to me and I want to try something else, I can do that. So I'm going to just, uh, uh, I'm going to give it a chance because I actually really enjoy the smooth ride. I think that the first thing I noticed about this car compared to the Mini Cooper was that riding on the dirt roads and the bumps and the potholes and all that, it was like riding on a cloud. like maybe not a cloud, but compared to the Mini Cooper, it was like riding on a cloud. It's just so much more comfortable. And I think uh, it's gonna be a lot more enjoyable, and especially just like climbing up the driveway. So the day we got the car and brought it home, all the snow from the previous snowstorm had melted. So we, we had muddy, super muddy conditions in the driveway and the car, I mean, had zero problems climbing up the hill. So uh, I did get it very dirty though on the first day, which was really disappointing. But, not to be outdone, let me show you one more thing. The day after I get my car, Brian trades his in for a truck. <laughs> we kind of got his and hers new cars. So he went for the new Toyota Tacoma um, off-road version. So I think for him, this was a good compromise between having the cargo room, but also being a passenger vehicle, being able to have more than one other person in the truck and he's gonna you know be able to drive it to work so he didn't necessarily need heavy duty you know pro off-road capabilities um, but he definitely needed something reliable that is capable of towing and something that he can do a little bit more cargo transport even though that bed's you know people would say that's quite short i think it's only a five foot bed we still got the trailer here so it's, um, you know, I think given the reputation of the Toyota Tacoma, you know, he's definitely got something that's going to last a long time and be able to handle all of the um, jobs we need it to do. So it's definitely a fun weekend for us. I mean, neither of us have ever driven or purchased brand new cars before, brand new vehicles. We've always bought used. I mean, maybe besides getting a rental car once in a while, we've never really driven a new vehicle. So it's kind of like a thrill, a little bit of a treat to have something new. And uh, I would say just for me, it's just nice to know that there's something really reliable that's gonna be able to get me where I need to go and um, something just a little bit more comfortable than riding around in that sports suspension of the Mini Cooper and uh, you know, feeling all those bumps down the four mile dirt road that we live on. So um, 
anyway, guys, I was just curious if you've, you know, heard of uh, the Jeep Compass. And I know everyone's heard of the Toyota Tacoma, and that's pretty much got a really good reputation. Um, I think the Compass is like the step down from the Cherokee, but I actually didn't really want the Cherokee because it was a little bit bigger. And with that bigger engine, the payments were bigger. So it was just like a bigger vehicle all around. And for me to go from a Mini Cooper to a SUV was kind of a big jump. <laughs> My other option was the Subaru Crosstrek. I was really considering that, but I, I went Jeep because of the clearance. And I wanted to have a little bit more that guaranteed cargo room that I could transport um, a pop-up tent and all my craft show tables and things like that. So that's kind of why I made this final decision. And also because it's a lease with a Jeep, you know, I can kind of test it out and see if I, if I like Jeep. So we'll find out. But I know I didn't need any like anything mega like the Wrangler or anything like that. That's a little bit too much car for me because I'm not one to really be going off-road. Hey, there's a honeybee trying to get on this video. So anyway, that's kind of the update of our cars. That's, uh, you know, where we're at with uh, getting things ready as soon as... Um, we also have one more. We've got one more issue coming up. We've got to get the tractor fixed. There's something wrong with the tractor. So I'm going to make a video about that and let you guys know what is going on. We've got to send it down to the dealer to get some work done on it. And that's another reason why Brian wanted to get his truck for the towing capacity and because he's got it get a trailer a little bit more heavy duty than the one that he's already got. So that's um, that's coming up this week, this coming weekend. So in the meantime, we'll keep you guys updated. We're gonna be working on um, what we've just been cleaning up around the house, but I think we got some more railings to do. We gotta find our railing um, in the woods, our, our log railing. So we're gonna just see if we can pick that up this week too. All right guys, we'll take care. We'll see you next time, bye-bye. Oh, we're taking your car. <laughs> nope, we're not putting miles on mine if we don't have to. A bug on, my car. A bug on your car already. <laughs> Day one. <laughs> oh. oh man, you got a spot on it. Wait, let's show everybody what you have in your front seat. On your driver. On your driver's side. Passenger, Passenger seat? Oh. This is a towel. No, yeah, there's a towel for me. Uh, but then it's not yours, for you. That's uh, where I put my muddy shoes. Oh, you put your muddy shoes there. Okay. Yeah. But where's your? What's on your side? So if it's muddy out, I have my driving shoes. <laughs> Brian has driving shoes. So I take off my muddy shoes and I put them on the towel after I bang them off. And then. And I put my driving shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> Brian really likes having a nice brand new car. I haven't had a new car since the 90s. <laughs> okay, old man. Time for time to upgrade. <laughs> uh huh. Look at that.